Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Micah Miller. I'm from Mantachi, Mississippi, and uh, I'm a senior in high school right now. And really recently, I've just went through a bunch of tough stuff, and I didn't know what was going to happen next, but God saved me. And I have an amazing story from the past six months of my life. I thought I should share it with y'all. I feel like it'll touch your heart if you listen to the whole story. So just, I'm just going to read it, and yeah. Many people will say that this story is a lie or that I'm crazy or insane. Many people won't read the whole thing because they'll think I'm lying when they get a quarter of the way finished with it. Many people won't believe it because it signifies Christianity and they don't want to give up their worldly lifestyle to live for God. But before I even start, I want to say that every single thing in this story is 100% true. And it is. I have thought out every single detail of it piece by piece so that nothing is left out and I hope it touches everyone. So my parents have always been Christian and I've always had to go to church, like it or not. I always went through the motions and never really liked it. I would sit in church and be so eager for it to be over as fast as possible so I could go do whatever. My preacher always scared me when he talked about hell and how horrible it was. I always wanted to believe what could, I always wanted to believe but couldn't bring myself to it no matter what. Around a year ago, I started praying every single night before bed that God would show me somehow that he's real whether it be in a dream or a real life occurrence. Little did I know he actually would. I'm a senior in high school and I used to vape, smoke weed, drink, cuss, and etc. Just didn't care what sins I committed because I never thought God was actually real. I got to where I loved being high, so I started smoking a lot. I found out they had vape pens that you got that you got high. That got you high, so I thought what better way to be at my house with my family home than to vape and get high. I started getting carts for my pen to get me high. I used about four or five full carts when I ran out of money completely. I started having noticeable withdrawals after a couple days, so I had to get my hands on another one somehow. I finally scrapped up, scraped up the money and got another one. I hit it a few times and got high. I started to kind of trip, but I felt, t but I kept telling myself, calm down, it's just the first time in a few days, and I eventually calmed down. I went to work and got high before my shift and on my break. After work, I got high on the way home and could notice something wasn't right about my high. Like, it just felt really weird. Like, like being high right then felt so weird. I continued home and got on Fortnite and did my routine of playing while I was high because I thought it was so much fun. I hit the pin and my heart started to race faster than I ever had, like more than in any sport or workout exercise I've ever done. It scared me to death, but it ended after half an hour. I continued to play Fortnite and I eventually hit it a few more times to renew my high. This time my heart beat even harder and faster. I told my friends I had to get off and that I was sleepy. I laid down around 1 a.m. and tried to sleep. That wasn't going to happen though. After a couple hours passed, I still couldn't sleep because my heart was beating so fast. I decided something was wrong. I was so scared my arms even started to tingle, which scared me even more. I laid in my bed for about 4 hours until about 6 a.m. just debating on what to do. This was probably the most scared I had been in my life. At 7 a.m., I finally told my mom what I had done and that I needed to go to the hospital. And I took a lot of courage to tell her that, by the way. We went to the hospital, and they checked my heart and vitals. Nothing was wrong, so they told me I just had spice-induced anxiety. I thought for sure, after I knew I was okay, that my heart would stop racing, but I was wrong. My heart continued to beat rapidly for literally a week. Literally a week. I stayed inside the house for a week straight, constantly scared of what was going to happen next. I thought I was going to die because my heart wouldn't calm. All I could think about was the worst of every situation. I started to get so paranoid I would overthink even the slightest thing and it was it would scare me for no reason. A phone could ring and I'd get super scared. One day my girlfriend came over and we went outside because I wanted to calm down a little. I've always believed in telekinesis and stuff like that and I really wanted to try to make it rain outside because I thought that would calm me down so I tried to. Oh my light went off. <laughs> so I tried to. I know it sounds crazy, but I've always wanted to be able to control things with my mind. And, like, I thought, like, doing that would calm me down and, like, make me, like, happier than I was. As soon as I thought about it starting to rain, rain hit my arm and then it started sprinkling. I was astonished and I told my girlfriend I thought it was a cool coincidence. After a little bit, my girlfriend left, so I decided to try to make it rain again outside. I thought maybe if I could, if I could my heartbeat would calm down and then I could do it. Every time I calmed my heart for a second, it would sprinkle for just a few seconds. Like five consecutive times in a row it did that. When my heart rate would increase, the rain would stop. I was so confused and scared. 
I had really messed up and it made it made things ten times worse because it scared me. I thought this would make me feel better, but it made it worse. I started walking outside after deciding to give up. I decided to pray. I started walking inside after deciding to give up and I decided to pray. I asked God to show me he's there so I have a reason to even live anymore. Two seconds after I said amen, the wind started blowing super hard and rain started pouring down so hard. I cried because of this and called my mom who was at work and told her about this experience. She told me how good God is, and we talked for a minute. As I was on the phone with her, I began to think, what if I caused the rain and wind to do that right after I got through playing? Praying, I know, that, I know it sounds crazy, but I was literally losing my mind at this point because of anxiety. I hung up the phone after a minute and went inside scared to death, thinking I caused that and God still wasn't real. That night that I, I was trying to sleep, it kept thundering. Every single time I would think about it thundering, it would. It got to the point where that's all I could think about. It thundered nonstop pretty much. I wasn't hallucinating either because my uh, my mom remembers. I finally calmed down, I thought. Then I thought about it thundering one more time and it sounded like a tank went off right outside my window, like lightning struck right beside my house. I jumped up and screamed as loud as I ever thought I could. I thought I caused this too. I ended up not sleeping that night at all. Everything got worse. Whatever I wanted to happen, the opposite would. I would try to watch Twitch streamers play Fortnite, and every time I would think about my situation, they would die. Literally every time. Like, they'd be playing Fortnite, and they would die when I got scared. It got to where every time I thought about it, people couldn't speak normally. Like, someone would be mid-sentence, and then I would start getting scared, and they would, like, forget what they were saying completely. Whenever I would calm down, they would resume their sentence. This happened with every person I spoke to for a few days. It was so scary. I went to work with my mom and her and her and the older people were playing bingo because she works at an old folks home and I just guessed I just decided I would try to guess the next bingo number and I thought B14 did not even knowing that was a number and sure enough B14 was called out out of at least a couple hundred possible answers as soon as I noticed I got it right my heart dropped and all the fire alarms in the building started going off it was crazy I started crying and I told my mom I wanted to go sit outside for a while and I did I prayed and prayed and I felt a little better so I went back in but everything continued to happen. Every single time I would think something would happen and be scared that it would, it would happen. I, I know it sounds crazy but I mean it happened to me. It continued until one day I talked to my preacher and decided to get saved. I started having a fire for God in me but it faded away quickly. Soon after I got baptized I started to fall out of my Christian ways. I never read the Bible, didn't like going to church and just distanced myself from God like before. I started back smoking weed every day, and I mean every day. Slowly, all of these horrible things started happening again. I was trying to sleep one night, and I felt something bad about to happen, and then my dog started to breathe really hard. She kept on as long, on as, long as I thought about it, but then I asked God to please make it stop, and he did. I ignored this because I thought it was me again, somehow. Like I just kept pushing God away and thinking it was me. I always cheated on my girlfriend a lot, and I'm not proud of it. This happened a couple weeks ago. I have been with her for six years, and lately I had just been feeling like I wanted to end things. She texted me out of the blue and asked if we were all right, and I felt like we were okay, and if I, f and I felt like I would never hurt her again. I replied and told her I don't know honestly. I told her I had been thinking about that a lot, and I had been. We talked and decided to end things. We broke up before and found our way back to each other very soon, but this time it seemed for real. I was so sad we were ending things but a little happy because I thought it would be time to be a hoe excuse the language we barely talked the next day on the way home that day from school I realized I wanted to drop one of my closest friends because they were fake this guy was my best friend since the third grade we were best friends from third to tenth grade he started being fake a couple of weeks ago or a couple of years ago and it slowly got worse so I decided to just not be his friend so I didn't have to worry about it anymore I told him and was ready to never speak again I was really depressed from losing him, my girlfriend, all at one time, but I thought it was a good start to a happier me. I cried for 30 minutes straight in my car before I went in from school. When I got to my room, I decided to read my Jesus Calling book by Sarah Young. I prayed before I opened it that God would show me what I needed. <coughs> I, wrote, I opened it to a random page. The page read, I am taking care of you. Trust me at all times. Trust me in all circumstances. Trust me with all your heart. When you are weary and everything seems to be going wrong, you can still utter these four words. I trust you, Jesus. By doing so, you release matters into my control, 
and you fall back into the security of my everlasting arms. Signs of my presence brighten even the dullest day when you have eyes that really see. Search for me as for hidden treasure. I will be found by you. Immediately after reading this, a flashlight from across the room fell over really hard. I got scared all of a sudden, but the fear was immediately followed by calmness. Read that up there again. It says, signs of my presence brighten even the dullest day when you have eyes that really see. And a flashlight fell. Coincidence? I laid on my bed after this thinking about everything when I soon realized every little bit of my life for the past six months was part of a plan God had to send. God had to set me straight and get me on the path to God. When my mom came in from work, we talked about this and everything else that's happened and she agreed. My mom can back me up on everything in this, by the way. I soon realized I needed to share this amazing story. I started posting everything I felt God wanted me to on my story on Snapchat. Some stuff was Satan trying to mess with me trying to mess me up so if you saw my snapchat story that day you'll understand satan really didn't like what was happening i was sharing what god has wanted me to he bothered me extremely bad for the next couple of days as i was spreading god's word and love but i pushed through with god i felt like i never wanted to sin again but for some reason i felt the need to keep vaping so i did i have always thought these were these weird coincidences in my life with the third eye if you haven't heard of it is where you unlock the best version of you and become genuinely happy with life and it's like all part of a plan but having your third eye open means that you no longer do things to harm your body the next day I realized why God wanted me to keep vaping it was because he was showing me that this was not the third eye thing because everything that related to the third eye and all the stuff that was happening to me was like really close together and God was showing me that it wasn't the third eye that was happening to me it was him my friend had my vape at the time when I realized this. We went to lunch and he never came back. I called and no answer. I didn't get my vape back that day at school. I decided it was time to quit because I felt like God showed me what I needed to be showed. When I got home, a friend called and told me to come across the road and that they wanted to learn about God. <coughs> Excuse me. I did and I told them about what had happened with a flashlight and they were amazed. I felt like I impacted their lives. I stayed up two nights in a row posting what I thought I should on social media. I soon gained over a thousand views on my Snapchat story as to where I only had 150 before. And I have 2,000 now and I'm blessed to be able to share what I'm sharing with people, that many people. People were arguing with me and some were very mean and some were very nice and supportive and some wanted to help getting closer to God and some just needed a friend and were in a very rough time. Those two straight days, I stayed up talking to everyone about what they needed. I sifted through the mean ones trying to be as nice as possible to them. I thanked the supportive ones. I helped the ones that needed help. I was literally sleep deprived because I stayed up two straight nights without sleeping. After the second night of not sleeping, I went to school and I could tell I didn't feel right. I went to school because I felt like I needed to. I apologized to several teachers for my past behavior and told them I'm a brand new person now. They all accepted and were happy for me. After I finished my test in English class, I decided if I, did, I asked if I could go to the office, but I just left school instead. My dad had texted me and asked if I would come over when I could. I went straight to his house and we talked a while and he got saved. My vi- and that's, I feel like that's why I needed to leave right then. My vice principal called me shortly after and asked me to come back to school. I told him yes sir and I headed that way. I got back and talked to several teachers and faculty. The school down the road from mine's police had called my town's police and told them I was making threats over social media. I hadn't been, but I guess many people were offended by what I was doing through God. My school and parents decided I needed to go to a behavioral hospital, so I did because I had God and I felt okay with the going. It was very boring there and I had no connections to the outside world. I ended up touching several people's hearts with my story there, and I guess that's why God made me so okay to go. After eight days of being there, I finally got to come home and see my family and girlfriend and talk to friends and sleep in my bed again. And I went literally a week ago. I was so happy. I started being more careful what I posted on social media, and here I am today typing my amazing story. Well, reading my amazing story. God has saved my relationship with my girlfriend and will continue to be in it until the day that I die. I'm confident that I will not hurt my girl anymore or anything like that. I won't cheat on her or lie to her or anything to hurt our relationship because God is in it. I'm a completely different person now that all of this has happened. Every little thing I put in this testimony is true, and I hope it touches everyone's heart. 
Nothing is made up or added to it. Please share it with as many people as you can if you feel like God wants you to. I just want to help every single person on earth make it to heaven even though I know it's not possible. But I'm living my best life through Christ now and my relationship with God is improving much every day. Satan attacks me sometimes, but I just tell God to help put the full armor of faith on me and help me to fight Satan away and then I'm fine. I thank you for reading this and I hope it touches you. I love you and so does God.